Human trafficking, as you all know, is a form of modern day slavery that affects the most vulnerable among us. In 2019, Montgomery County, 92 individuals were charged with prostitution offenses, human trafficking and assault. Police seized nearly half a million dollars associated with human trafficking and executed over 70 search warrants. Today, we recommit ourselves to combating this issue, which has impacted so many lives across our county and our nation. I also uh, wanna uh, clarify that we, we are here to celebrate and to acknowledge the efforts of the Montgomery County Human Trafficking Prevention Committee and thank them to their dedication, um, for their dedication to improving services for human trafficking victims and ultimately eliminating human trafficking. I'll now turn it over to Vice President Albernoz, uh, Council Member Rice and Katz, and then to Aaron Andrews from Fair Girls. Vice President Albernoz. Well, thank you, Mr. President. I want to begin by thanking the Commission for Women for their tireless advocacy and leadership on this and so many other issues. You are a true partner to our county, and I know I join all my colleagues in expressing our deep appreciation for your work. The issue of human trafficking is a tragic and substantial one around the world. More than 25 million people are involved in human and sex trafficking rings around the world, including here in Montgomery County. One of the first cases, uh, one of the first constituent issues that my office worked on when I became a council member was a mother uh, that lived in Montgomery County and whose husband, uh, unbeknownst to her, had not been updating her immigration documentation. And so she was undocumented. The husband held that over her uh, in a variety of different ways, basically making her a slave to him. And so this is a very real issue, both at the local and international level. And I'm so proud of the efforts of the commission for your leadership to continue to shed light on this dramatic concern. So thank you for that leadership. And I look forward to reading the proclamation. Councilman Bryce. Well, thank you very much, Mr. President and Vice President. And thank you to all of the folks uh, <laughs> at the Commission on Women, uh, Jody, Everyone, you guys have been absolutely amazing uh, in terms of where we started. I remember one of those first meetings when we first began uh, the commission and now where it's grown and the successes. Um, working in partnership with our police department, working in partnership with nonprofits that provide support, we have rescued and saved many lives. And that can't just be, you know, that's, that's one of the reasons why uh, we're celebrating and that kind of success can't be discounted. Um, it really says something. Uh, just like council member Albert knows, has a memory, I have a memory of a young woman uh, who was being trafficked here in Montgomery County and her mother frantically called into the police department saying that she thought that she saw an advertisement for her daughter online. The police working in conjunction with some of the nonprofits in the area figured out where this girl was located and ended up rescuing her. She ended up testifying against uh, her trafficker and that trafficker went to jail. It actually led to uh, an arrest that ended up with um, drugs being seized and this person being a part of a much larger ring. These are the things that happen each and every day because of the dedication and support of people like you. And so I wanna thank each and every one of you on the Zoom today uh, for all of your great work. And again, saving young lives, it truly matters and makes a difference. Thank you. Um, let me turn it to uh, uh, Aaron from Fair Girls is here. Hi, Aaron. Thank you, Councilmember Hucker. Good morning, everyone, and a heartfelt thanks to the County Council and the County Executive for your support, not only this month, but throughout the year in your partnership and commitment to better addressing human trafficking in our county. My name is Aaron Andrews. I'm the Executive Director of Fair Girls, and I also have the privilege of being the chair of the Montgomery County Human Trafficking Prevention Committee. For those of you who don't know Fair Girls, it is an anti-trafficking nonprofit located in Washington, D.C., but serving survivors referred to us from all over the region, including Montgomery County. The Montgomery County Human Trafficking Prevention Committee seeks to bring professionals, law enforcement, and community members from varying disciplines to share their expertise within the anti-trafficking field in order to facilitate a more collaborative and robust multidisciplinary approach to the issue of human trafficking in our county. We know that more informed allied professionals that are engaging in best practices, the more effective we can be in our anti-trafficking efforts. This has certainly been a challenging year for all of us, the committee is included, 
But we also know that it's important now more than ever to not be complacent. For those of us who are in the trenches and on the front lines acting as first responders for trafficking survivors right now, we know that human trafficking did not stop during the COVID-19 pandemic, not by a long shot. In fact, the economic hardship, isolation, and increased online presence of youth as a result of this prolonged pandemic will likely only exacerbate the vulnerabilities and risk factors that we know traffickers are so adept at exploiting. At Fair Girls, calls to our hotline tripled in the first quarter of FY21, and that's 10 months into this pandemic. And we know we are only beginning to see the negative and long-term impacts of the pandemic on human trafficking in our communities. And that is why it is so critical that we stay vigilant in our anti-trafficking efforts, that we continue to build the partnerships in the county fostered through the Human Trafficking Prevention Committee, and why we need to continue to take a 360 degree approach to addressing human trafficking, prioritizing a survivor-centered approach to law enforcement and direct services, and a proactive strategic approach to prevention education in our local schools and training of allied professionals. Through the support of the Human Trafficking Prevention Committee and funding from the County Council, thank you all of you, um, since 2008, Fair Girls has served 18 individual survivors referred to us from Montgomery County. And I'd like to share one of their stories with you here today. Last October, Fair Girls received a crisis call from the Montgomery County Vice Detective Unit, indicating that they had identified a sex trafficking survivor during an operation. We have changed her name for confidentiality reasons, but we'll refer to her as Tanya today. The detective brought Tanya to a safe emergency housing location provided by Fair Girls. And, and Tanya then shared with the Fair Girls team that her trafficking began in her childhood where drug dealers had exploited her addiction to force her into trafficking. Shortly after being placed in her emergency housing, it became clear that Tanya was suffering from a serious heroin withdrawal. The Fair Girls team immediately began safety planning with her how to access emergency resources related to those symptoms while simultaneously researching programs that could support her through her detox. While we were unable to identify any such programs in the county, Fair Girls was able to secure a bed at one of our DC partners, the Psychiatric Institute of Washington and arranged for Tanya to be safely transported there. But once she arrived, Fairgirls was informed that she didn't qualify for admission because she only had Maryland insurance. A Fairgirls manager zealously advocated on her behalf and was able to obtain an exemption so that she was uh, entered into the 28 day detox program. While Tanya was at PIW, Fairgirls continued to look for longer term inpatient substance abuse programs in the area that could support Tanya in her new and fragile sobriety. Again, we couldn't identify any such programs in the county, but we found a program in DC that agreed to accept Tanya without DC insurance. Fair Girls helped Tanya transition to that substance abuse housing program. But sadly, like so many of the survivors we serve at Fair Girls, whose addictions have been created or exploited by their traffickers, Tanya struggled to cope with her sobriety and compounding trauma. She wanted to live free from drugs and trafficking, but her addiction overwhelmed her and she left the pro program, likely lured back into life she desperately wanted to leave behind. While Fair Girl stands ready to welcome her back without judgment at any moment if she decides to return to services, we also know that the gaps in the specialized substance abuse services remain. One of the goals of the Human Trafficking Prevention Committee is to identify those gaps of services in the county. And as we continue to see addiction-based trafficking on the rise, as our vice detective partners have informed us, we know we'll be, we will need to continue to work closely with the council and our local partners to address that gap because survivors like Tanya need access to services that will support their healing and minimize the risk of future exploitation. As allied professionals in anti-trafficking sphere, we are called to seek to understand the depravity, inhumanity and injustice that is human trafficking, to look within our communities for better ways to combat it and to endeavor to empower survivors to restore hope. As I think about how daunting this challenge is for us, I'm inspired by the powerful words that, mo words that most of us have heard already in the last week from Amanda Gorman, young poet laureate, in her poem, The Hill We Climb. When the day comes, we step out of the shade aflame and afraid, unafraid. The new dawn blooms as we free it, for there is always light if only we're brave enough to see it, if only we're brave enough to be it. 
Thank you so much to our county council and county executive for this proclamation, for making anti-trafficking efforts a priority in the county, and for supporting the service providers as we try to be the light in the darkness for survivors. Thank you. Thank you so much, Erin. Um, and Jody, can I turn to you and uh, you want to introduce everyone with you? Uh, I'm actually, if you don't mind, uh, um, have them introduce themselves. Please. Wendy, you want to start? Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Wendy Stickle. I'm a senior lecturer at the University of Maryland Department of Criminology and Criminal Justice. And I teach a uh, full semester long class on human trafficking as well as run a study abroad program when we're able to travel. And I'm happy to be the co-chair of the uh, Montgomery County Criminal Justice Human Trafficking Prevention Committee, or not criminal justice, human trafficking prevention committee. <laughs> you know what you meant. Thanks for your leadership. Uh, Donna? Good morning, I'm Donna Rojas and I've been with the Montgomery County Commission for Women for about four years now. I'm also on the Human Trafficking Prevention Committee and I'm currently serving as executive director for Social Work and Reentry Services for the State of Maryland, Department of Public Safety and Correctional Services. Thank you for having me this morning. Thank you so much. And Jessica, welcome back. Good morning. Thank you for having me this morning. My name is Jessica Voles, and I'm the Clinical Director of the Forensic Medical Unit at Adventist Healthcare Shady Grove Medical Center. I'm a nurse practitioner and work with um, survivors of trafficking as well as um, other survivors of power-based um, victim power-based crimes. Um, I'm happy to serve here on the Montgomery County Human Trafficking uh, Prevention Committee on the Victim Services Subcommittee as the co-chair. And I also serve as the co-chair of the Medical Subcommittee for the Maryland Human Trafficking uh, Task Force. And so I'm happy to be able to tie those things together to help serve Montgomery County. Thanks so much, Jessica. Um, is there another council member that has the proclamation? Because I don't. Or can staff help with this? Councilmember Rice? I, I have it too. So I oh. can start us off. Why don't you, why don't you, uh... do you want me to go ahead and start us off, Mr. President? Please. Yes. Okay. Whereas oh. human trafficking is a form of modern day slavery that has greatly impacted many lives across the U.S. and in Montgomery County where traffickers use violence, threats, deception, and other manipulative tactics to force and coerce young uh, adults and youth to engage in commercial sex acts or provide labor or services against their will and. Whereas in 2019, Montgomery County Police reported 29 cases of suspected human trafficking and charged 92 individuals with prostitution offenses human trafficking and assault. Police have also seized over $440,000 associated with human trafficking and have executed 74 search warrants at locations such as banks, spas, residences, and hotels. I got it now. Um, and whereas the Montgomery County Human Trafficking Prevention Committee, despite the challenges caused by the COVID-19 pandemic, has continued to work diligently to curb human trafficking and through their partners, provide some critical support for human trafficking survivors. And? Whereas January is Human Trafficking Prevention Month, which formally recognizes that human trafficking consistently occurs in the United States and emphasizes the need for the public and private sectors to come together to focus on prevention, prosecution, partnerships, and support for survivors. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the County Council of Montgomery County, Maryland, hereby recognizes January as Human Trafficking Prevention Month, presented on this 26th day of January in the year 2021. And this is signed by Council President Tom Hucker and myself as Council Vice President. Thank you and congratulations, and thanks again for your hard work. Congratulations, everybody. Thanks so much. Keep up the good work and let us know how to help.